Are you planning to apply for PhD in Australia, but you're not sure how to do it? Welcome to this live demo where I will walk you through step-by-step -step process of applying PhD admission at an Australian university. From navigating the university's website to filling out the application form, I will show you exactly what you need to submit a successful application. Let's get started and make this process straightforward and stress-free. Uh, I have selected University of Melbourne uh, to show you through their uh, admission process. Uh, and this is their website, Graduate Research. Uh, so here you can see uh, domestic applications, international applications, international joint PhD degree. So there are three options uh, and you can check this uh, in your own uh, when you you can also check it later on after the video. So let us uh, assume that you are an international student. I will click on this. Uh, and we will see the entry requirements, the application process, uh, offers and enrollments, fees and payments, and so on. And like I said earlier, I mentioned to you that um, do you need, when you have to find a supervisor, uh, there is a supervisor registry. So this is an example of a supervisory registry. Need help finding a research supervisor? Uh, to apply for a graduate research course, you will first need to find a supervisor. If you haven't found one or need some help, you can search for the supervisor on our find an expert website. So you can uh, check uh, check this here. I'm not going to show that now. It is fairly straightforward. But let's look at the entry requirements. Yeah. So entry requirements in Uni Melbourne is minimum eligibility. Uh, you are considered an international student based on your citizenship, even if you are studying in Australia. So this is very important to understand that uh, the the Assessment of whether you are international or domestic depends upon your citizenship. So even if you are in Australia for now, maybe you are just finished a master's degree, but you are still considered as an international student. Uh, to be eligible to apply for graduate research courses, uh, you normally require to have completed at least four years Australian bachelor's course or overseas equivalent. Yeah. So if you have done a four-year degree in your own home country, that is also fine and achieved an overall average of greater than 75% in final year of the course, which means overall the complete score has to be 75% or above. And you can imagine because this is one of the topmost universities in the world. And that is an average standard across. So anywhere, most universities would require 70% or above. There is another requirement. You're also required to have, a com have completed a research project or a component that accounts for at least 25% of your fourth year work. Yeah, fourth year undergraduate, bachelor's degree or master's. So you have to have a research component. And what does the research component mean? So a research component means you are, uh, a research component means that uh, you have to, uh, you should have done some research in your uh, in your honors degree or in your master's degree which is wherein you have actually completed a research project and uh, and also published something from that so if you have uh, published in the sense it could be a thesis that you have submitted as part of your uh, assessment uh, next is the visa requirement uh, i already explained to you in the session earlier uh, in the uh, before now we'll, here we have course specific requirements so requirements vary by course. Usually to apply a graduate research course, you first need to determine your research topic and find a supervisor. Some graduate schools advertise available projects. Okay, so this is also important. Uh, what you can also do is you can look for, uh, look for uh, some projects that are already advertised on the university website that these are the projects that we are looking for uh, PhD students to work on. And sometimes such projects are funded and there is a scholarship that is associated with that uh, applic with that um, uh, with that project. So that is also a good idea. <clears throat> uh, on this website, there is also find a course uh, option where you can see if there are any specific requirements for the course that you are uh, interested in doing. So remember uh, when I told you earlier on that there are university requirements uh, as first thing. And then there are program specific requirements as the second thing. So as the as a eligibility criteria at a university level, you may uh, you will qualify. But then the department or a specific uh, course program 
uh, would need to have some special requirements. So you also have to check those. So for that, you can use the find the course option. Uh, writing a research proposal, I already covered uh, this in the webinar yesterday. Uh, some graduate schools require a research proposal to be part of the application. I think almost every uh, university would require a research proposal. And it doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to be very com uh, comprehensive at this stage. Uh, like I mentioned yesterday in the yesterday's session, that a two-page research proposal is uh, two or three pages is sufficient uh, for the um, for the admission purpose. And once you have got the admission, then you can always um, uh, improve uh, and uh, build upon the uh, research proposal further. Uh, to develop a research proposal, you need to be familiar with the current research in your area. Your proposal also needs to state your research question your area of interest and how you will undertake your research. So in uh, yesterday's session, I mentioned about the importance of methodology. So you have to identify your research question and you also have to identify how you are going to answer that research question. So both the things are equally important uh, and it, actually, it shows that you have given a thorough uh, deep thought on how you are going to uh, conduct this research. So it is not just randomly you are thinking you have uh, the research proposal should convey your uh, research that you have done on uh, on that stage uh, next is english language requirements uh, i already mentioned that uh, you can apply you can use uh, toefl ielts uh, pearson test of english or pte uh, cambridge english or cae or uh, so these are the four uh, i guess the most common tests that you can do to prove your english capability and you also need to satisfy the requirements in one sitting within 24 months. So the results of these tests are, I guess, uh, only valid for two years. So if you have completed this, uh, ex uh, these tests, but you are applying after two years, then those uh, results will not be eligible. So you would have to appear for that exam once again. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> applications. Let's see what is here. Okay, so in, in here, in their application process, there are uh, seven stages. So step one is to choose your course. Uh, step two, check eligibility and fees, prepare your documentation, apply, be assessed and wait for offers, search for scholarship, and plan for accommodation. So choose your course. It could be Doctor of Philosophy, uh, Masters of Philosophy, Masters by Research, so you can see the differences about these different uh, programs. Like in case of doctors, doctorate by research, they offering they are offering a coursework component in parallel with your research. So uh, this is different compared to a standard uh, typical PhD that uh, everyone knows. Uh, another thing that you can um, also uh, consider is if you are if you have a if you are from a management discipline. So if you have done uh, MBA, for example then uh, you have two choices either you do a phd or you can pursue a dba which is a doctorate in business administration so uh, dba for example in the university where i work uh, they uh, have one year of coursework and two years of research so it is uh, more suitable for professionals uh, who are working in the industry and uh, want to uh, take their research uh, want to pursue a a doctorate program uh, and on many occasions when i have had candidates come and pursue a dba they have i have suggested them that they can choose a topic that is related to their related to their work for example if they are finding something challenging at work uh, or just at uh, the business where they are working is uh, struggling with something that could be a good topic uh, for their research uh, because they can not, it will be like killing killing two birds with one stone. Uh, because you will be working on your DBA and on, and the project that you have uh, selected is is related to the work that you are doing. So you don't have to specifically work on something different uh, uh, just for doing your DBA. You can work on a topic that is uh, related to the place where you are working. Okay. So step two is check eligibility and fees. Uh, prepare your documentation was the third step. And I think, let me see what did they mention here. At a minimum, you need to provide academic transcripts and a CV with your application. If you are currently studying, you also need to provide a transcript of the 
final results and evidence of completion as soon as they are available. Uh, depending upon the course, you may be required to provide a research proposal or folio of creative works, uh, GRE or GMAT for your uh, writing sample. If you don't have verified digital copies of academic documents uh, or current for prior or current studies and wish to obtain during your application, you can select digital via. Okay, so this is a service uh, which will do this assessment of your qualification. Uh, academic transcripts, I guess we already covered that. Referees, I mentioned that you would need to provide uh, name and contact of uh, like in this university, they want two referees. Sometimes uh, other universities may ask two or three. Uh, if it is less than five years since you completed your last course, they should be your academic referees. If it is more than five years since you completed your last course, then they could be your professional referees. So depending upon your uh, situation, uh, you would have to find an appropriate uh, referee to uh, give you a reference. Uh, next is publications. If you want to include in your application details of the publications in which you are the author or co-author, please follow the following formatting convention. So if you have published a journal article, you have to uh, write it in this format, book, chapter, book, refereed conference papers. So include that. And I think it is uh, you can either include that in your CV or when you are submitting this uh, application online, they may have section where you can add that. Find a supervisor. I already showed you uh, a link where you can find uh, supervisor. Application process. If you are current student at Melbourne, apply through this. If you are a new student, you can apply online, but you have to go to a, a different link. If you need help with, uh, you can find an overseas representative to help you with the lodge of an application. So this could be some form of an agent who provides you uh, the service for preparing and submitting your application. So you can also try that. Uh, you can track your application by logging back into student account. So the account that you have created here, that will show the status of your application. Uh, then what do you have? Don't have results yet. Uh, you can still apply if you haven't got your final results. So if you are in say final year of your honors degree or final, final year uh, master's or last semester of your master's degree, you can still apply. Uh, and once you have your final results, then uh, you can submit them the additional uh, and the final uh, transcript. Uh, be assessed and wait for offers. Like I mentioned, uh, we uh, it does take time for assessing the application and getting the response. Next is uh, search for scholarships. If you are eligible, you will automatic, automatically be considered for a graduate research scholarship. So this is what I was talking uh, earlier, that if you are, if you have, uh, when you're submitting the application for some admission, there is also an option to uh, submit a scholarship application. So this is what uh, this one says here. Uh, there are different types of scholarship applications, uh, scholarships like Endeavor scholarships, traveling scholarships and other grants. So do check that on the research funding page. And last is plan for your accommodation. Once you get the application, once you get the admission and you you also secure your scholarship and you're ready to come, you will then be able to uh, also look for on-campus accommodation. <clears throat> so those are the basically the two things. Uh, and most universities, uh, most universities in Australia will uh, have more or less a similar uh, process or similar format of uh, applying uh, when you want to apply for admission for PhD. Okay, so that is what I wanted to uh, cover in today's session. If you have any questions, please do ask. Uh, and also uh, take time to uh, follow me on all the uh, social uh, channels that I am on. So take a screenshot of this maybe. Uh, and later after the session, please uh, follow me on these because I do share uh, other relevant content. Uh, on these uh, uh, platforms.